everyone. Uh, this is Naveen George. Uh, I'm really excited to have you guys here. Thanks for taking time. Uh, so this presentation is uh, my main, mainly to show you guys some of the updates that we're very excited to show you and to show how we're expanding our portfolio when it comes to condition monitoring and the eye alert uh, product line and would uh, kind of fill in the gaps for the stuff that you guys have been asking for for a while now. So uh, let's get right into it. And uh, the first thing, I guess, just so that for everyone here, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Naveen George. Uh, I've been in, in uh, IPT now for actually six, uh, seven years uh, since yesterday. Uh, and I've uh, been the product, now I'm the product manager for about a year, but I've been with R&D with product line for the beginning of the product, of the ILR2 product, and uh, definitely focusing on the IoT product development. And uh, yeah, just excited to show you some of the stuff that uh, we're coming up with. So the biggest thing would be what uh, what we want to talk about today is automated diagnostics. So in the end of the day, what we are trying to show you today is uh, people have used to, who have used our system, who have used our sensors and everything. One of the biggest things we've seen out in the market, uh, out in our customer base, is that uh, our our eyelids are really good, really easy to use. Uh, they can use the data really well on the portal. But what is the next step? So the, the data is shown, the spectrum is shown on alarm, all that is great, but what do I, how do I make sense of it? Usually what people do is they send it out to a third party reliability firm or maybe have an internal uh, group that has probably kind of extended their resources and stuff like that. So it's not the ideal situation just to have a data dump. So what we are excited to show you guys is we're trying to make that data more, um, make sense of that data and give you uh, actionable intelligence. Vision analysis pretty much takes it at the spectrum, uh, get a, uh, compares it or uh, lets you go in this black box that is a rules-based engine developed over a decade by vibration analysts and spits out uh, what the fault is, what the recommendation is, and what the severity of it. So that itself is something that I feel like it's been talked about a lot within our customer base, like I mentioned. Uh, in the end of the day, if I can give you an idea of what you need to look at and what exactly might be the reason the, the spectrum is behaving that way in an alarm event, uh, that is very valuable and something that is now filling in the gaps from our comparison side of things and also from our value proposition as well. Uh, the, the biggest thing is to reduce time and expertise to collect the, and analyze the data and also a flexible solution, because you'll see in, in a couple of slides, where we are kind of building an ecosystem that kind of, you can pick and choose what you want to do, and we want to provide as much as uh, the full uh, closed loop system to make sure that you can get everything you need from our system, uh, now adding this automated, uh, uh, automated diagnostic value proposition as well. So just to deep dive, just get right into it, what we're talking about and how it's going to look in terms of your portal or in terms of the UI. Uh, this is a use case right here, which you guys are already pretty familiar with. Uh, in terms of this right here is the trend data that you can see on your portal. You can see how this is, by the way, this is a real case scenario with the uh, pump motor setup. And one thing that I wanted to mention here is now we're not just talking about having an eye alert on a motor, eye alert on a pump or any kind of uh, driven equipment, we're talking about having it on an acid train. So when I talk about acid train, I'm talking about a motor pump set up altogether. So when I see this trend data, I'm seeing that it's behaving fine, behaving fine, but then I see the, the, there's some kind of process issue or, or some mechanical fault issue. And then after that, you can see over here that uh, it crossed the threshold and thereby um, uh, creating an alarm event, and then also the, you'll be able to click on that on that spectrum and then see the FFT that you see over here, the spectrum that you see over here. So this is kind of what you see right now. In the end of the day, you see all the spectrums, you kind of look at the harmonics and everything, and then you send someone who knows what they're looking at and try to make sense of that data, right? Uh, but what if you don't have that person? What if you don't have that time to do that in analysis? So what we are doing in this case is that if you see right here, with a click of this button right over there, which we will get more into a uh, uh, little bit more detail about the UI, but with a click of that button right there, you'll be able to then uh, get within seconds, uh, like I mentioned, the fault, the recommendation, the severity of the recommendation and fault, and now you have straight up 
uh, actionable intelligence and a path forward without kind of wasting time trying to find someone to know what they're looking at or uh, trying to, uh, but in the end of the day, when, you, when it comes to falls, certain falls, you want to make sure that you don't waste any time. So that's what we want to provide you guys, a very quick way to kind of give you an idea where, where to look at and what to look at. And this particular case, uh, why, why I want to highlight this case is because this is an actual use case where we had, because we've been testing this uh, diagnostic rules engine for uh, over eight months with different beta customers. And one thing that we definitely caught with this particular customer is that, hey, this spectrum, when we ran against our rules engine, uh, we, was, we saw that it said replace pump bearings and pump roll bearing wear. So we told the customer, hey, this is something that you might want to look at. And it's, uh, it's an important severity, a serious severity, maybe just go look at it. So what they did is that they, they saw that this was a good reason to uh, honestly stop the equipment and break it down. And one thing that they found out was, yes, it was a bearing issue. They did have higher vibration, higher temperature, and all that was correlated to a bearing failure. So the best part about this is that you were able to save the customer a lot of time, save the customer before it had to, um, before a catastrophic event took place and was able to give them an idea of what to look at. And that was so valuable for the customer. And he was like, Dialed is detecting stuff where your competition is not. And when he says stuff, he's talking about mechanical faults. So that's the biggest thing that we want to make sure that, uh, that we highlight here is that it saves time. It gives you uh, a, an expert, expertise analyst um, uh, analysis right then and there with a the click of a button. And now you don't just get a data dump, you get actionable intelligence. So that's what the, big, the most excitement that's coming around this. And there's also other updates that we'll be talking about in terms of the gateway and everything. So this, some, this is a slide that you guys already probably already seen in the sense that we have our portfolio right here pretty much where you have your Bluetooth sensors, uh, your vibration triaxial temperature sensor right there with ILS2. Then you have your pressure sensor uh, all communicating to the app and then goes to the AI platform to see it. And then you have your gateway, which makes it 24 seven remote monitoring. But like I said, we had a gap in between, and this is where we fill in that gap. And one thing that one thing that I'm going to just talk about it right now, just touch base, but I'll get into deep dive is the gateway uh, is going to have two-way communication as well. So just from a diagnostic perspective, you'll be able to see the data and make sense of that data. But if you want to interrogate the sensor, we'll be able to update the gateway automatically in terms of the software. And then now you'll be, a, uh, you'll be able to do two-way communication to the sensor from your AI platform. I know I'm just touching base with it. I'm gonna get a little bit more deep dive into that functionality, but this is, like I said, filling in the gaps. And that's our biggest thing. Now you can pretty much, from a customer standpoint, uh, I can now use Nialert and, and the whole uh, team of uh, different product lines and then pick and choose what I want for my particular uh, use case. So this is that example of that, right? So if I just want uh, the sensor and just I don't want to get a 24 seven remote monitor, I can use my app. And one thing that I want to highlight from this particular side is the diagnostic is that's not available on the portal, it's available on the app side as well. So that's something that we want to make sure that we keep true to our, um, our customer base because in the end of the day, we want to make sure that you guys can go interrogate the sensor right at the sensor level or if you want to sit in your desk, uh, on, your, on your desktop somewhere, anywhere in the world, you can also look at the data through the AI platform. So that's something that, uh, that we just, we, we want to make sure that we keep that same uh, concept of having the app and having the, di uh, having the AI portal. And when I, when I mentioned about the gateway, obviously the gateway communicates to uh, the cloud-based using cellular and also Wi-Fi capabilities. Uh, now, as I mentioned, the two-way communication. So say you have a data going up here, and then there is something that uh, the thresholds uh, and the spectrum shows that, hey, there's some kind of issue. If I want to increase the trend acquisition, or like increase the frequency of the trend acquisition, or uh, I want to increase the frequency of the alarm check, that I want to change the tag name, change the thresholds, all of that can be done using uh, the two-way communication from the gateway, from the platform, down to the center. So if I'm anywhere in the world, I can now start interrogate, excuse me, interrogate to the sensor via the AI platform through the gateway. And also this, this ecosystem kind of shows you that we are just not um, a system that shows the data right on the platform. 
We are also uh, available, I mean, our data is available to get piped to your data lake, which is our historian, like a Pi or a Delta V. Uh, and since most of, not most of, but all of this, all of this setup and development was done in-house by our uh, IT team and our software team and our hardware team, uh, the flexibility for a solution that we can provide you is uh, pretty much no ceiling to it because, I mean, there is obviously certain ceilings to it like any other product line, but uh, with this addition of uh, diagnostics and addition of a two-way communication, now really I don't see a gap when it comes to uh, pushing it uh, to get a solution for a condition-based system to implement in, in any kind of environment, uh, especially since our sensors are certified for class 1, div 1, and all that good stuff. So. Just wanted to touch base on that, and if you guys have any questions, please let us know in the, in the presentation. So, kind of giving a summary of uh, of our sensors, because a lot of probably a lot of customers that's online here probably are very familiar with the but maybe some are not. So, I just wanted to just kind of highlight a few of our our uh, key points why it why you should be choosing the ILR system, and why it kind of makes sense for you guys uh, for your uh, your use cases. The biggest thing is ease of use and, and uh, easy to set up. So at the end of the, end of the day, there's a wireless sensor. You just want to make sure that it's mounted properly on a, on a proper location. And we have different adapter mounts that you can use, a magnetic mount you can use. And in the end of the day, in, um, like, if you, like from personal experience, to set up like 50 uh, eye alerts uh, on, uh, on 50 different assets uh, with, with the gateway and everything, it took us about four hours between two people. So just to get everything 24-7 remote monitoring uh, and also getting condition monitoring for about 50 assets, it took us four hours, like I mentioned, and that's something that keeps us very attractive to a lot of customers. Uh, making the equipment smart, so in the day, it's not a red light, green light indicator. It actually gets, tells you what the uh, overall RMS is. But more than that, if it goes into an alarm state or if you just want to interrogate it to get a spectrum, it tells you uh, with a one hertz spin resolution, tells you exactly what the, um, uh, what the, the, the fault is from, like I mentioned, from a spectrum standpoint and everything. So I think this, that, that's what makes us, like, from the ILR2 perspective, being out there for five years, a, a great value for a lot of our customers. Uh, the plug and play method, that's the thing from a, from a gateway standpoint. And then in the day, if you want to make your uh, overall solution a 24-7 uh, a remote monitoring, if anything goes bump in the night, how do you kind of get that information? That's where the gateway comes to play. And one thing that we want to make sure is that the user doesn't need to configure anything extra. They can just find a good location for it, plug it in, find a power source, and then you're up and running. And that is what we try to make sure that that the user ease of use is something that we take pride on, and we want to make sure that is uh, trans, uh, translated in all our product lines. Uh, the accuracy is another thing that obviously that we keep harping on. In the end of the day, if you compare our our sensor to a handheld and keep all of the the like the sampling rate, the windowing, and everything the, the same, we have plus or minus 10 percent to a handheld. Uh, which is pretty impressive because you, from a price difference itself, uh, it's, uh, it's impressive, but also just to take our measurement and take our spectrum and to compare it to something like a handheld, it's not, uh, it's not, I'm not seeing that done with a lot of our competitors. And also that's something that uh, I, I challenge our customers to try it, uh, try it with their own system and see how they, how we stand and stuff like that. So those two things are very important to us and also the other points that I mentioned. Uh, one of the things about this particular slide is I wanted to mention is when you do your predictive maintenance route, uh, it's great because you get an idea where it stands at that particular point. Uh, maybe you find a mechanical fault by using your handheld, by taking spectrums and stuff. But what happens in between that? So our sensor uh, wakes up every hour default and stores the measurement internal to it. We can store up to six months worth of data, and uh, we can store up to seven alarm spectrums as well. So if there's any kind of process issues and anything like that, uh, we can catch that being a trending tool. So you can add that to your predictive maintenance route as well. So this particular case, a real use case where uh, an equipment was kept, the, it, uh, the, 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 no, sorry, the seal kept failing, and they really did not know what was the issue be, uh, behind it. So what they did is put an eye alert on there and started trending the data and then uh, collecting the data periodically and saw that between uh, B and C shift, the valve wasn't closed and it was dry running. 
And that's where you're trying to uh, like let our customers know that in the end of the day, if there's a mechanical fault, you can run it against a diagnostic tools engine. But if there is a process issue, you'll also be able to catch that using a trending tool. So like I mentioned, we're trying to give you a full-fledged solution uh, with everything that we can think of that can like fill in the gaps pretty much, right? So the two-way communication, I know you saw a lot of people are pretty excited about this part. Uh, in the end of the day, um, the two-way communication piece is something that we're excited to show you is uh, the, the biggest thing right now from, an, from a gateway standpoint, and I say plug and play, you don't need to do anything. And same thing when it comes to updates. You don't need to worry about configuring it for an update and everything. The gateway will look online because we can remote access to it and we can update the gateway. So right now, what we've done, right since we already launched this new updates and everything in the past week, uh, this week and next week, we're updating all the gateways out in the field uh, to have this two-way communication. So if you guys already have gateways, this is all getting updated to your particular gateways right now. Uh, so what is the two-way communication, right? So at the end of the day, if you see on the uh, right-hand side right here, this is the UI that you will see on your AI portal uh, where you can request and schedule diagnostics on demand. So if you want to schedule a new spectrum once a week or once every two weeks or whatever, uh, we, the minimum is once a day, but you can go all the way up to, like I said, once a day, but you can go to months and stuff. But if you want to just keep track of how the equipment is doing in terms of spectrums, you can do that. You can run a new diagnostic uh, on demand. Uh, and after you look at the spectrum, you're like, you know what, I, can, I really want to increase the frequency of my trend acquisition. This is where this part comes into play, where I can now, like I mentioned, change my rate, change my alarm wake-up rate, uh, the, the orientation, the sensor name, the position, and all my thresholds right here. Uh, this, this is something that's important. This, this two-way communication is just not for ILO2 vibration sensor. It's also for our pressure sensor as well. Obviously, you cannot do the diagnostics, but it doesn't do the spectrums uh, for the pressure sensor. But when it comes to uh, when it comes to changing alarm levels and everything, you can do that. Uh, and the thing is, now you can also communicate your pressure sensor via the gateway, which is another update we just came out with as well. So, uh, in the, so this is something again, like uh, I've uh, since talking to a lot of customers out there, talk, talking to a lot of uh, our field uh, sales personnel and everything. This is something that's been asked uh, from us. Of, a good amount, and I think will be you guys will be excited to see how easy easy it is to use it and how respondent it is. And now you can there's no uh, and also from a from an efficiency standpoint, I don't need to send someone out there every time there's some issue. I don't need to send somewhere when if I want to change something, I can just sit on my desktop, do a, a do a communication to not just one single sensor, uh, multiple different sensors, and be really efficient from my conditioning monitoring. Uh, standpoint, uh, and also now from a room, from the, uh, the current environment with uh, with COVID and not having a lot of uh, capability of sending a lot of people out there, uh, I can now do remote access, and that is a big. I mean, obviously this is done. This is important for pre-COVID as well, but from a, from a, from a COVID situation and from a limited amount of resources situation, I think this would be very useful for a lot of our customers out there. So, and another thing to kind of emphasize is once you get the spectrum, like you get from a two-way communication, you can then run it against a rules engine right then on your on your AI platform, and then you can get the results right at, as we speak. So, again, just how quick and easy to get an idea where your equipment stands and what you need to do in terms of actionable data. So, those diagnostics what it is, how it is, and how do, like, how does the diagnostics work? So if you look at this particular slide, the eye alert is a, is a sensor that obviously you guys know we're talking about 4,000 samples per second in three axes. Uh, we can give you spectrums on demand, spectrums and alarm, but now you have a spectrum, what do you make sense of it? You send it through a rules engine, which is uh, developed over 30 years, contains over 1,200 different faults, variations, and in the end of the day, we'll give you an idea right on your mobile app, right on your AI platform, what do I need to do? Is it a misalignment? Is it a cavitation? Is it some kind of um, a bearing issue? Those are the stuff that I would like I would like to know right away, and that's where we come into play with the diagnostics. And that's, 
uh, it, this is not something that's developed over like a couple of years. This has been developed for a long time and uh, to make to and also developed by a lot of people who have been in the industry for a long time as well. So um, from a scalable solution, this is well, what we wanted to mention is that uh, if you just you can pick and choose how you want to do it. If you want diagnostics, if you want 24-7 remote monitoring, if you want the full integration to your historian, to your RESTful API, all that stuff, we can provide that. And uh, that's just one thing that we definitely want to make sure that you guys understand is uh, it's just not you need to get diagnostics or you need to get this or that. You can pick and choose the way that you want to to kind of fit your value proposition or your use case. So the new features, like I said, filling the gaps. Uh, the biggest thing is from an AI portal perspective uh, and uh, with the diagnostics, you get actionable intelligence, you get ease of use, you get accuracy of the skilled vibration analyst, and you can now start interrogating it to, from your sensor without sending someone out there. If need be, obviously you can send someone out there, but you don't need to right? because now you have your gateway that you can communicate to. So what equipment do we support? in terms of uh, our rules engine, right? Because at the end of the day, um, we have to kind of make sure that we relate this very clearly because it's not every single driven equipment and it's not every single driver equipment. So from a driven equipment standpoint, what we can provide diagnostics on is centrifugal pump, screw pump, progressive cavity, thread pump, gear pump, fan, centrifugal blower, cooling, tower fan, agitator, mixer, and aerator. When it comes to like the intermediate, when it talks about like coupling, we do rigid and flexible, closed couple, belt, chain, and gearbox, uh, the driver equipment and AC DC motor. So that's this is our this right here, you guys once you guys start using it a little bit more, you'll understand this is an asset train. So when I mention an asset train, I'm talking about your driven equipment, your driver equipment, and your intermediate. So now we're not gonna just give you um, a diagnostic on just the pump side or just the motor side, they're gonna give you a uh, diagnostic on your your asset train. So that's the biggest thing in this uh, in this particular slide that I wanted to highlight. And also one thing we wanted to make sure is um, to kind of get get an understanding is how many uh, how many sensors do you need to get the best results, right? Because right now what we have usually recommended is one on the uh, motor and one on the pump. So if you have if you have Right one on the driver's side of the of the driven equipment, you are kind of limited to about 17 faults. If you are going to put one on just the motor side of things, kind of limited to only 27 faults. And this is kind of the usual setup that we usually see out there and recommend out there is you get uh, you get one pump and one on the motor, you get about 50 faults, uh, which kind of gives you an idea of the full size of your asset train, which is the which is what we really want to see. And then if you really want to get the full optimization of the rules engine, this is 76 faults. I know I said 12 on, but it's variations of the 76 faults. Uh, you want to have one on the driver, one not the non-drive end of the motor uh, or the, the driven equi the driver equipment, and one on the driver side and non non-drive side of the driven equipment. Uh, this is what we are recommending to get the best use of our rules engine. Uh, but again, it all depends on how you want to use your, uh, uh, how do you want to use it? We will still give you a diagnostic, but I just want to make sure that you understand if you want to, get, if you want to optimize your uh, investment, this is how, what we recommend in terms of insulation. So you get all that, you get the results. What do the results mean, right? What are the faults that you're going to talk about? I know we talked about like imbalance and stuff like that, but that's great. I mean, fault examples like, uh, serious indication of coupling wear or moderate pump shaft looseness or slight pump flow restriction or disturbance. That's great, but do I need to act up on it right now? Do I need to uh, just wait and see or do I need to keep an eye on it? That's where the severity comes into play, right? So you have your slight, your moderate, serious, and extreme. So at the end of the day, if you go all the way to extreme, what we recommend is you please go look at it at, uh, as soon as possible, take more data, and kind of make sense of why it is uh, why we deem it as extreme, and then if you wanted to make some changes that it, that to make it more um, believable, we can do that. But at the same time, uh, this is like the severity kind of gives you an idea of what you need to do and how quick you need to act upon it. And same thing goes to the recommendations. Like some of the examples are replace pump bearings, overhaul pump, and select pump assembly for proper fit. Uh, again, the same thing as your false status. If you we give you four different um, 
severity is obviously the first one, no recommendation, so you won't get any kind of recommendation. But then the next three is what you would be acting upon in the terms of like, uh, do I need to just keep an eye on it or do I need to send someone right there to, uh, to kind of get a better idea as soon as possible because that's what I, what the rules engine is fitting out. So that, that is the output that you guys will see and then make decisions on top of it on how you want to act. Up. So that's all good in, in terms of uh, the diagnostic and in terms of uh, the updates and everything. And like I keep mentioning in the terms of ease of use, the mobile app and the AI platform is where you will see these updates at, right? So this is a software update. So from a, from a, from a customer standpoint, you, you can get, once you do pay into the subscription for diagnostic, you can use your mobile app to see the data and you can see the AI platform and there's no manual update needed. You will, it'll be like updating your app like you usually do from, from your cell phone. In the AI platform, there's no like an update thing. It is, since it's a web-based platform, you'll be able to just see the updates as you log on to it. And one thing I wanted to mention to our customers who have pro accounts, uh, you guys will be getting uh, the diagnostics already enabled for your remainder of your contract because we want to make sure that we uh, obviously uh, adhere to your AI platform uh, pro account and also want to share this uh, new exciting feature when it comes to diagnostics with, with, the, with our loyal customers. So I just wanted to mention that as well. So now I just want to take you to a quick video of what it looks like from an app perspective and a portal perspective. So give me one second. So from an app perspective, this is pretty much how you would be using it. You would be going to the sensor, you would be clicking on your app, you'd be connecting to the sensor like you normally do, nothing really changed in this aspect of things. And only now the difference once you connect to it is that the advanced tools page. So this right over here. So once you go to the, once you connect to it and you go to the advanced tools page, that will look a little different because that's where we hold all our diagnostics. Spectrum's already downloaded right there. I click on one of the spectrums, I can run the diagnostics right there and then get a result within seconds. So you can see how quick I was able to just get an idea what is wrong with it. And if I want to improve it, uh, let me just pause that for a second. Yeah, so now I just want to mention right here, if I want to improve uh, the, the results, there are different ways to improve the results. One of the ways is obviously, like I mentioned, is adding different uh, sensors to different parts of the, the overall asset train. But the other thing is we, uh, there's multiple things. One is to make sure that you give enough information about the asset train. So when you go and uh, when you create your asset trains on the portal or on the application, you'll see that you'll need to put more information than you were asked before in terms of like uh, the, what equipment it is, what bearing arrangement it is, and what, um, uh, what's the coupling and all that stuff and the speed and everything. So there's more information that you will be asked to put in. Uh, and more, the better optimized information that you put in there, the, uh, the better results you'll get. And all that information about what you need to put in is on our website on iler.com. Uh, and also there are videos online and everything for you to show that. But if you guys need more information on how to set it up, please reach out to your local sales rep uh, person or one of us, and then we can kind of guide you through that process. And if you have a lot of sensors to kind of get more, uh, get more information about it, uh, we can help you by you giving us a, a list of that asset train, and then we'll be able to put it in the background as well. But I'll get into that when we go to the portal side, but I just want to mention that. Another way to make it more optimized is getting getting spectrums when it's running normally and marking them as normal. So once you mark them as norm, normal, uh, now you're not just comparing it against uh, spectrums that are in that same class. You're actually getting comparing spectrums to that particular asset train. We recommend about three uh, of uh, marking three normal spectrums as normal. Uh, sorry, <laughs> marking three spectrums as normal. And then when you do get an alarm state uh, event with the spectrum, you can just pretty much uh, run the diagnostics on there, and then uh, you'll now get the best use of our diagnostics as well. So that's what this kind of shows you. I mark it normal, and then I go back, and then I go back to the spectrum, and I run it again just to make sure that it's not anything kind of anomaly, and I get the same results back, and uh, that now kind of tells me, hey, all right, I can kind of believe this. Now, if I want to improve more, I can now, like I mentioned, 
kind of get more information about the asset. And I can start running different spectrums over and over again from different time spans and trying to get an idea where I stand with my particular asset. So that's, the, that's kind of the idea from the app application standpoint. Now, I just want now, from a portal standpoint, is that this right here, which shows you how the portal looks like. So, from a side view page, everything looks very similar. Uh, you will pretty much go over here, check your notifications, and see that it went into alarm state or not. So, you can click on one of the sensors, click over there, and it takes you to the asset page. This is what I was talking about, giving more information. So, this is where it looks different. You have to kind of define what the asset train name is, orientation line frequency, and then you need to go down to your, uh, uh, to your sensor data right here where you can see that it kind of puts in the equipment type, the equipment category. So all this information just helps us make our, our results more, uh, uh, more oriented to your system and more accurate, right? So that's what we're trying to do here with adding all this information. And just to reiterate what I just said like a couple minutes ago, uh, if you guys have a lot of sensors, just we'll give you a, a, a template of a spreadsheet to fill this information out, and then we can help you load this all up instead of you guys going to each asset and creating it as well, depending on the number of sensors you have. Please, uh, please make sure that uh, you guys uh, you guys use that, use us for that, and also use us for um, uh, to kind of guide you on how to do this better. So going to that. Um, in the end of the day, this is kind of the uh, pretty much the same thing that you guys already see. You guys you can just do the communication all on top, but now you have your trend data. Now you have a spectrum. That's good and everything. Now I can see my spectrum on the next page. I mean, next uh, when you scroll down, uh, that's good. But what does it mean? So I now I can run that uh, run diagnostics, click a button, and then I get a result right there. So that's what I wanted to kind of show you from these two videos is how you can use your application. You can use your a portal and get the results right then and there, uh, get the reports, all that, uh, and with all the information that you see on the screen, uh, pretty straightforward and much, and, and again, ease of use, which is one of our trademarks, right? So now going back to the presentation. One of the things that we want to also kind of change is the way that we uh, provide our solutions and everything. So uh, the sensor uh, stays the same in terms of you can just buy it outright. Uh, it's the same kind of uh, method in terms of that. The diagnostic bundle is a little different instead of uh, like you've seen before where you kind of do 25 sensor batch, we're now going in sensor level. So you can pretty much uh, get the diagnostics per sensor. And, uh, and, the, and there's prices like, uh, associated to each different option that you see here. And I would definitely uh, reach out to your distributor or your local sales personnel I, or, or one of us in MC, uh, MNC and ITT uh, to kind of get what the pricing would be for each individual customer. Uh, but that's the diagnostics bundle where you can get uh, it's minimum 20 sensors, uh, but it's individual sensors. Uh, automated diagnostics, both the mobile app and the web platform, that's what you see over here. Uh, the gateway is the same. It doesn't really change much in that aspect of things. The leasing model, you got to pay per subscription per year. Uh, but this is something that I wanted to highlight a little bit more for customers. Um, if you want to try to do a more of a, com a company-wide or corporate-wide solution, uh, we wanted to get into where you guys don't worry about uh, what the warranty is or buying the sensor outright. You lease it for a certain price per year per sensor. And it's a, uh, you, you pretty much don't have to have the headache of worrying about warranty. If something goes wrong with the sensor, we will replace that sensor. It's under the same contract. And the, the biggest thing from our standpoint is that since we're doing this as a leasing thing, uh, where you just lease the sensors and the diagnostic, it, we, we, we're trying to aim for a minimum 20, 250 sensors and a three-year contract. So from a customer standpoint, uh, it's not like I need to pay a one-time capital investment into a big, uh, solution. I can do. I can break it down into my three-year contract and a service agreement, and I don't need to worry about any kind of warranty issues. And I have full-fledged solution with the diagnostics, the sensor, all um, all under this one CDM bundle, let me one call it. And again, if you guys need any more information about this or the pricing for this, please reach out. 
and we'll definitely help you guys out with this. Uh, and this is kind of what we're excited because we're trying to not just go for like a solution of like 20 sensors or whatever like that, which is great if some if that is what our customers want. But if customers want a full fledged solution, which we can like I said from the ecosystem, we kind of fill in the back, fill in the gaps. Now adding a leasing a leasing system, uh, we're reducing your initial investment like you would if you want to buy 250 sensors outright. So kind of excited to show you guys as well. So a summary of what we just talked about. Uh, and then in the day, it's automated vibration analysis. Uh, expands the ILR condition monitoring solution, reduces time and expertise to collect and analyze the data, and again, just trying to be as flexible as possible uh, with our solution that you can, with, with what you guys need is what we want to fit our solution uh, to. So, uh, again, please, if you want more information, reach us at uh, the support at ILR.ai, or you can go to the ILR.com page where it's all updated uh, with uh, the new support documents when it comes to diagnostics, the gateway, uh, the application, all that stuff. And, and again, please reach out to your local uh, rep or to one of us as well.